Hello and welcome to another stop on the Swift Components Tour, Pickers. I'm Kyle with Nibble Noggin IO and let's jump right in. A picker is something that everyone has seen using iOS but they may not know what it's called. It's basically this sort of three pseudo 3D rounded scrolling drop down menu. I guess it's sort of like iOS's drop down control. And what's happening in this view controller is I have a label here asking what is your favorite of Apple's favorite cities? And I'll explain in a little bit where I learned what Apple's favorite cities were. But for now, let's just pick our option. I've never been to any of these. I'm just going to pick Sunnyvale because it has a nice name. It, it sounds kind of nice there. But anyway, as you select an option in this UI picker, then we change this answer label up here to the current selection in the current selection of the picker. And then down here, we have a UI text field with placeholder text that says pick a date, any date. So we tap on that UI text field and up slides a UI date picker, which is a specialized version of the normal UI picker made just for dates. And you can customize this a little to include the time, maybe add some zazz with some colors or backgrounds or something. But as usual in the Swift Components Tour, we're keeping it pretty plain. And anyway, we just select whatever date we want. How about we select my birthday, not 2015. I'm pretty old, so I don't want to scroll like all the way back, you know, however far. But my birthday is November 4th, and now we can see that it's on a Wednesday that this year. That's pretty cool. Wednesday birthdays are the third best day to have your birthday. And I would know I've had a few. Not important. Let's check out the storyboard. Here in the storyboard, again, like a few of the other view controllers we've seen in the Swift Components Tour, this scene looks exactly as it does in the app. Maybe a little bit different spacing. What's going on with the spacing here is this UI text field's constraints are actually constraining it to a specific distance from the bottom of the screen, which we see here rather than rather than maintaining a strict distance from the view above it which would be this UI picker and again this is just a label asking a question a label to display the current value of this UI picker view and this UI picker which I've just dragged out from down here again and I mentioned about where I got the options of your favorite of Apple's favorite cities when you drag a UI picker view into Interface Builder, it's automatically populated with these five options. And you may notice that you can't customize the options over here. And that's because the UI picker view actually uses a delegate and data source, like a table view. And we've also seen delegates use the UI text controls, like UI text field here. And when we get to the code, we'll talk about that. And then again, with this UI text field. Basic UI text field, just set the placeholder text. That's all we need to know about it. So, how about some code? Up here, three properties for our three UI elements. The city picker, the picker display label, which was that picker that the text was always set to the current value of the city picker. And then the date text field. Underneath, we have a property for an array called picker data, which is just those five cities stored as strings in an array. And then a property for a date formatter and a property for the UI date picker. So in view did load, we're just calling two methods to set up picker and set up date picker. In set up picker, what I'm first doing is adding a border to the picker. I don't really have a reason that I did this other than just there's no border normally. I'm not sure why I didn't add one to the UI date picker underneath. I guess it doesn't matter, but there's a border. And here we're also setting the data source and delegate to this view controller, which you can also do in the storyboard. And then we're telling the picker after it has run through its delegate and data source methods to select row with the index of two, which is actually the third row. And that's Cupertino which is the default selected one when you drag it out onto Interface Builder. So I just stuck with that. 
and then we're telling the picker display label to set its text to the picker data's object at index 2, which is again the third one, which is again Cupertino. So a quick run through of these delegate and data source methods for the picker view. The first one, number of components in picker view, all that's asking. How many sections going from left to right there are? You can see in this standard UI picker view here, we only have the one. But in the date picker, we have three for month, day, and year. And since we're only worrying about the city here, we don't need to know about the state or the country or anything. We're just returning one section. In the next method, it's asking how many rows are in the component. And since we only have one component, we don't have to worry about which this method is asking about. And we're returning five and actually a better way to do that would be to return self dot picker data dot count and that's because if we ever change the options in here maybe we add another then the picker view will automatically update with a sixth row otherwise if we would have kept this at five we could have had a sixth option but the delegate only says there's supposed to be five rows, so we will only still see these five rows. Next delegate or data source method, it's just asking what the title for the row is, and we're returning the picker data object at index row. So basically at index zero of the picker view, we're asking for object, object at index zero of the picker data array, and so on and so on until we get to index four which is actually the fifth element in the array. And this last method is just getting the event from when a value is selected in the picker view and updating the picker display label. Again, when we select a new option, it will update the label above to the currently selected option. So let's check out the date picker. A bit of setup is required for this since we didn't add it in through Interface Builder and I'll explain why. In just a second first off we're setting the date picker mode to dot date and I think the other option includes date and time not sure about that but we can just leave it for now it's not super important then I'm adding a response to the event value changed to call this method date picker date changed when the date in the date picker is changed or the value is changed so it will call this method on the object self we're setting the date of the date picker to today's date and the date picker's background color to white. And here is where it is interesting because we are doing something cool with the date text field. We are setting its property input view to the date picker. And basically all this will do for you normally when you pop, when you tap on a text field, it will slide up the keyboard or in this case if you're in the simulator and you have the keyboard turned off it won't slide up a keyboard but it'll just let you type but since we are setting the date text the date text fields input view to the date picker when we tap on the text field it will slide out the date picker like it is a keyboard for the text field you can do this with any UI element that you want even something custom that you made up that just displays some random shapes that you would want to add to the text field maybe. It's something that's your choice, but since we're on the picker stop at the Swift Component Store, I thought it was suitable to use a UI date picker here. And then we're just setting the date style of the date formatter. Down in this method that we mentioned earlier that is called on the value changed event of the date picker, all we're doing is using the date formatter to set the text in the text field to the selected date in the date picker. And it formats it so it says day of the week, month, day, year. And then this final method here, we may have covered it before, but all it does is to hide the keyboard on a tap or a swipe or scroll or anything. One thing it doesn't do is catch touch events that are intercepted by subviews of the main view. All this is catching is touches on non-interactable elements of this view controller, such as this label. And that's it. Thanks for watching.